All right, so when you have it for graphing, you are going to want to put it in slope intercept form if it isn't already there, this one was, and then you're just gonna graph. Graph your point, your y-intercept, and then graph your slope. So you should have two points and draw the line where they intersect as your answer. All right, so for this one, you wanna put it in slope intercept form. All right, and how do you do that? This first one is x plus 6y equals 48, all right? Move your x over. You have negative x plus 48. Divide by 6. You have y equals, what's your slope here? Negative 1 6 x. 48 divided by 6 is 8, all right? So you'll see for this one, we start at the eight, we go down one and over six, all right? And then you can also go up one and left six, which is how they got that point there. All right. Look at the next one. The next one has kind of a crazy slope, but it's the same concept, all right? Same concept here. Um, we're going to take the 11x plus 6y equals negative 12. We're going to move the 11x over. And then we're going to divide by everything by the 6. All right, so we get y equals negative 11 6 x minus 2. So we started at 2. Going down 11 and right 6 is going to take me off the graph. It's also not taking me in the direction of the line I'm trying to cross, by the way. So in this case, I would go up 11, and I would go right 6, okay? So I would go up 11 and right 6. <clears throat> now, when you do that, you're actually going to be right on that line. So up 11 and right and left 6 is the same thing as down and right. So one negative movement is all you need here. And so oftentimes, if you graph your first line, you're going to choose how you do that slope based on where you're going to that second line, right? Because it's going to help you get to that line. So your answer here should have been negative 6, 9, because you ended up here for this point right there. That is your answer. So when you have a variable that's already isolated, you can just take what it equals and plug it into the other equation for the variable that is by itself. So I'm gonna rewrite the top equation. I'm gonna say 5x plus two, and instead of y, I'm gonna write what y equals. Negative 5x plus 19 equals 23. And now I have one variable that I can solve for. So I'm gonna distribute that two. Two times negative five x is negative 10 x. Two times 19 is positive 38 equals 23. Combine my like terms, five and negative 10, give me negative five x. And then subtract your 20, or 38 rather over. So subtract your 38 over. That's going to give me a negative 15, and then divide by my 5. So negative 15 divided by negative 5, x equals 3. I am not done. I need to plug it back in. So what is y? Well, I'm going to take this and say, if I know my x, I can solve for my y. Just plug it in. Negative 5 and 3 give me negative 15. Negative 15 and 19 give me positive 4. So my answer here is 3, 4. So when I have it like this, I can say the group 4x plus 1 equals the group negative 6x minus 19. And then I can just move my variables to one side. So if I move my 6x over, remember it's a positive 6x to cancel it over here. All right, that's gonna give me a 10x. And if I move my one over here, it's gonna be a negative one because it was positive on this side. So we're gonna cancel it there. 
That's going to equal negative 20. And then I just divide. Negative 20 divided by positive 10 is negative 2. To solve, I can plug it back into either one of these. Y equals, and so I'm going to use this top one, 4 instead of x, write negative 2 plus 1. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8 plus 1. And negative 8 plus 1 is negative 7. So my answer here is my xy, negative 2, negative 7. So you'll notice here the x and y here both have coefficients. This is a 1x, this is a negative 8y. So if I'm looking at these four variables here, I'm going to pick the easiest one to get by itself, which is going to be this x because it already just has a one in front of it. All right, so that's what I'm looking for, an x that's, or a y, that is almost by itself. And so I am gonna get this variable by itself by moving this negative eight y over. So I'll say x equals, because the eight y is going across my equal sign, it's gonna become a positive eight y. I'm adding it to both sides. This stays a positive nine. That does not change signs, it did not move. Okay, the 9 stays the same. So my x equals 8y plus 9. Now I have a variable by itself. And now I can take this group and plug it into the other equation for x. So I'm going to write, rewrite this equation right here. And I'm going to plug in that group for x. So negative 3. And instead of x, I'm going to write 8y plus 9 plus 4y equals 13. Distribute and solve. So negative 3 times 8 is negative 24y. Negative 3 times 9, negative 27. Plus 4y equals 13. Combine my like terms. Negative 24 and 4. I'm going to move my 27 over. So add 27 to both sides. I'll get negative 20y equals 40. And then to solve for y, divide by that negative 20. Remember, positive divide by negative. We're going to get y equals negative 2. And then to solve, just plug it back in. And again, you can use either equation. If I use this one, it would be x e minus 8 times negative 2 equals 9. Negative 8 and negative 2 are positive 16, so x plus 16 equals 9. And then subtract your 16, x equals negative 7. So my answer here is xy, negative 7, negative 2. So if we look at this one, remember with elimination, we are really looking for a variable that will eliminate if we add. All right, so it means we're looking for a variable that has the same coefficient. It's just one's positive and one is negative. So in this case, you can see that your x's have a positive 10 and a negative 10. So this one is ready to just add. We're ready to just add this down to solve. So we are gonna just add straight down here. Negative 10 and positive 10 are gonna cancel. 7y and negative 5y, that's going to give me a 2y. And negative 9 and negative 5 give me negative 14. So then I'm going to solve y equals negative 7. All right? <clears throat> Once I know y, I can plug it back in to either of the other equations. So if I say negative 10x minus 5 times negative 7 equals negative 5, Negative 10x plus 35 equals negative 5. Subtract that 35 over. Negative 10x equals negative 40. Divide by negative 10. x equals 4. So my answer here is going to be 4, negative 7. All right? Going to rewrite this guy 
and I'm gonna leave it alone because I'm not actually going to change anything with this first group. <clears throat> For the second group, I'm, I'm personally trying to eliminate my X's, all right? <clears throat> so I am gonna multiply the second group by negative three. Negative three because I need a positive nine there for my X's to cancel, all right? If you did Y's, then when you rewrote this guy, you should have multiplied everything by negative six, all right? So it just depends on which variable you did. If I'm doing this one, negative three times negative three, negative three times positive six, and then negative three times positive 27. What did I get? 60, 81? All right, now we are ready to add down. Here I have a negative 9x and a positive 9x. Those will cancel, all right? Um, I am going to get 1y. Remember, there's a 1 there. And a negative 18 gives me negative 17y. And then... 30 and negative 81 give me negative 51, and that is evenly divisible by 17. So I'm going to divide both sides by that negative 17, and I will get y equals 3. Once I know y, plug it back in. Same process. Negative 9x plus 3 equals 30. Subtract that 3 over, so I have negative 9x equals 27. Divide by negative 9 x equals negative 3. So my answer here is my x, y, negative 3, positive 3. For this one, I can't just multiply one group, okay? So for the last one, I just had to worry about one of the groups because I actually had a multiple of it already there meaning my nine was a multiple of three. So all I had to do is multiply the group with the three and I didn't have to worry about the other group. Here we don't have multiples of each other. We have a seven and a four and a nine and a six. <clears throat> and so I have to get the least common multiple or at least a multiple of those. With the seven and the four, um, your least common multiple is just multiplying them together, right? So I'd have to multiply the top by four, the bottom by seven, right? For the 9 and the 6, you could actually just go up to 18 here. So I can multiply the top by 2 and the bottom by 3, right? You don't have to multiply them by each other. That's going to be a big multiple, but it, it will be. Think about like least common denominator options, right? So you take your biggest number, 9, double it, 18. 6 goes into 18. So you, you wouldn't have to multiply each of them by each other if you can find a multiple that's smaller. So once again, you can multiply either one of these. Um, I think the 18 is going to be the easier one because you're multiplying by smaller numbers. You just might not see it as easily. They're both either positive or negative, so you're not going to have to multiply either one by a negative. Your x's are positive and negative, and your y's are positive and negative, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, so for this one, you're going to try to get one of your variables to the same number, one positive, one negative. All right? So if I did the, the y's, I would say, well, I'm going to make them 18. So to make this y an 18, I would multiply this group by 2. <clears throat> and for the second group, if I want to get that 6 to an 18, I need to multiply by 3. It's already going to be a positive and a negative, so I'm good there. Now I just need to distribute and solve. So 2 times 7 is 14x. 2 times the negative 9 is negative 18y. And 2 times the 8 is 16. Then I'm going to do the same thing to the bottom group. 3 times the negative 4 is negative 12. 3 times the 6 is the positive 18. And 3 times the negative 2 is negative 6. And now they are ready to add down. <clears throat> 14 and negative 12 give me 2x. The y's will cancel. 16 and negative 6 will give me 10. And then to finish solving for x, I'm going to divide by that 2. So x is going to equal 5. And then I can plug it back in. If I plug it back into that second one, negative 4 
times 5 plus 6y equals negative 2. Negative 4 and 5, that gives me negative 20. Plus 6y equals negative 2. If I add the 20 over, I'll get 6y equals 18. Divide by 6y equals 3. So my answer here is going to be, again, my x, y, 5, 3. Now you could have done it multitude of ways. You could have taken your x's and multiplied the top group by 4 and the bottom group by 7. Okay? You would have had bigger numbers, but you still would have gotten the same one. All right? Or if you didn't see the 18 multiple, you could have multiplied the top by 6 and the bottom by 9, and you would have gotten a 54, which is a multiple, right? Um, and so there are a multitude of ways to do this. You're going to look for the one that maybe makes it the easiest. You're going to try to look for the one that you have to multiply the smallest numbers by, right? To get the smallest numbers to have to add and subtract and divide by.